In this tutorial, I don't just want to talk about how to highlight, I also want to talk about what highlighting actually involves, from the tools we use to how we interact with our miniatures. My name's Michael, and I want to cover as much as possible so there's no questions left unanswered, so I can give you the best guide to highlighting I can. If you've already seen some of my tutorials on the channel, I do cover highlighting in pretty much all of them, and I do say it's the most important technique to learn and practice because it doesn't just improve the look of our miniatures, it also improves our brush control and hand-eye coordination, but I'm never able to go into as much detail about highlighting as I would like to, so I decided to make a whole tutorial just about highlighting. So what I want to show you in this tutorial is based upon my own experience and how I like to approach highlighting. And even though it works for me, it may not work for you. Everybody's different. But hopefully there may be things that you see that can help, or at least get you thinking about how you can approach highlighting. I think a good place to start is right at the very beginning and talk about what highlighting actually is and why we do it. When painting miniatures, the idea is to help us imagine and represent characters and objects in a 3D space or setting we can physically interact with. This means we at least need a basic understanding of how objects interact with light. This allows us to use shadows and highlights to bring out details and shapes, helping our miniatures to stand out more and look like they could actually exist or how we imagine them to be. For creating shadows, we can use washes and recess shades where we darken the shallow areas and details on our miniature, helping to create definition. These are pretty straightforward techniques that only really require us to neaten things up when we're messy. And if we want to create some highlights, we have layering, glazing and line highlights. And these are used to emphasise the raised details and edges to further define the shapes across our miniature so we know what we're looking at. The techniques for highlighting however are a lot more involved than those for creating shadows and this is where people struggle with highlighting and not so much shading so let's see what we can do about that. The most prominent way of highlighting and what we most associate with it is the line highlight and it's this highlight that we're going to be focusing on because as I said if we learn how to really get good at this it's going to improve our miniature painting overall. A line highlight may also be called an edge highlight or fine highlight, but all are essentially the same thing. They involve us doing our best to paint thin lines, often on very small details. And although this seems pretty simple, it's actually pretty tough to paint a thin line. So yes, essentially this tutorial is how to paint a line with your brush. But once you can do that confidently, you'll find you have the brush control and skills to not only highlight, but you'll also see an improvement in other techniques as well. Now we know a bit more about highlighting and what it involves, let's talk about what we can do to improve. I now want to talk about the things that can affect and influence our ability to highlight. And this begins with where you paint, because it's really important you have somewhere you feel comfortable with plenty of light so we can see what we're doing. We have a better chance at highlighting when we're nice and relaxed with no distractions because it does take some focus and we have to pay attention to what we're doing, especially when starting out. The next thing to think about once you're happy in your space are tools and I want to start with the palette. There are two types of palettes we can use, a dry palette and a wet palette and you shouldn't think of one being better than the other, it's personal choice and they each have their benefits. I do however recommend and something I use when highlighting is a wet palette. A wet palette has the ability to keep your paint usable for longer as it doesn't dry up like it would on a dry palette. This means we can concentrate on the job of highlighting without worrying about replenishing the paint. If you want to make a wet palette you just need a container with a lid, some paper towel and baking paper. Place some folded up paper towel on the bottom of the container to start with and you want to have a good layer of it as this is what's going to hold the water. The amount of water you want is enough water so the paper towel is completely wet without having a puddle of water on the bottom of the container. We can then place a sheet of baking paper on top of the wet paper towel. I like to pre-cut a lot of sheets so I can change them out regularly. 
Now you have your wet palette. A wet palette does take some getting used to as the paint behaves differently. Just remember that the paint still needs to be thinned as normal. As well, the lid stops everything drying out in between using it, so you don't have to make a new one every time. You can easily change the baking sheet and add a little bit of water when you need to, but I do tend to change out the paper towel and refresh everything regularly. I want you to know that our hobby supplies and tools don't need to be fancy or expensive, as long as they allow us to do what we need to do and to do it well. And this goes for brushes as well. When it comes to what brushes to use, it's really up to you. Personally, I do stick to using the Citadel range, just because they're a good price, readily available and easy to get hold of, and they've got a good variety of different brushes. You want a brush you can use. This doesn't mean the most expensive or fanciest, it's a brush you can vibe with. You'll soon have your favourite brush because it just seems to do a better job at doing a certain thing, even though it's exactly the same as the other brushes you have. So the best thing to do is just to try different brushes and different sizes of brushes and see what you like to use, because everybody is different. As well, when it comes to brushes, I do like to use the different varieties of brushes rather than using the one brush for everything. This helps to keep our brushes usable for longer. Which brings me to my last point about brushes. They're not an investment, they're tools that we use a lot and will need replacing regularly. Something else that may come in handy for highlighting and something I use often is a pair of reading glasses. You can use magnifiers, I just like to use reading glasses. These really help me to see what I'm doing as most of the time we're dealing with very fine lines on very small details. And you'll really notice the difference when you can actually see what your brush is doing. Now we've looked at some of the tools and equipment that can help us with highlighting, we also need to take a look at what we do, which can also have a massive impact as well. What we do with our hands and body can also have an impact on our ability to highlight, and most of the time we'll tend to do things instinctively but it is good to be aware of what it is we're doing. For best practice, we want to prevent a lot of movement in our arms by bringing our elbows in closer to our body or even resting them on the table, whichever way you feel comfortable. And we want our hands to work together with the miniature we're painting. And we can do this by having some part of our painting hand contacting either our other hand or the miniature. This keeps everything in sync and moving together keeping us in control of how the brush moves against what we're painting. It's also important for us to have good posture, because I know from experience we can be painting for multiple hours. As well, please make sure to take regular breaks. The last thing I want to talk about before we actually start getting into highlighting is how having a painting handle or something to hold on to whilst highlighting can make painting those thin lines more achievable. Having something to hold means our hands aren't getting in the way. We're less likely to drop the miniature and it becomes a lot easier to rotate and manoeuvre the miniature around. So we can get our brush into better positions to paint those trickier highlights. Because it's easier painting a consistent line using a downwards motion rather than horizontally. So now we've talked about everything that can influence and affect our ability to highlight, let's actually talk about highlighting your miniatures. For this final part of the tutorial, I want to actually look at the process of highlighting and the problems we can have and how we can improve. Even though we've prepared and we've watched a ton of tutorials and we've got all the equipment and brushes that we need, we're not instantly going to see a massive difference. It's only in the process of highlighting that we can improve our knowledge and skill. But let me show you some of the things we can think about whilst we do that. So we have our brush all ready for highlighting. We have our wet palette, paper towel and water. Now we want to think about thinning our paint. There isn't an exact ratio for thinning our paint. We just want to make sure we have a consistency that we can use to paint those line highlights easier. Because if the paint is too thick or too thin, it's harder to achieve a nice consistent looking line. And what also helps is to remove some of the paint from your brush onto some kitchen paper, giving us more control over how much paint is deposited because the one thing we don't want are thick blobby lines. 
and this tends to be the biggest issue most people have and get frustrated with. I also find sticking your tongue out is compulsory. The idea behind highlighting is to paint lines on edges and raise detail to draw our attention to them and to make these features stand out more. You can make things easier if you have a lot of edges to highlight by angling your brush against an edge and running your brush along it to create the highlight. For places you can't do this, then you're just going to have to take your time painting those thin lines along edges and on details you want to highlight. That's really all there is to it. There's no point in making it complicated. Edge highlighting really is just about painting nice consistent lines on your miniatures, but that's the thing most people struggle with. When starting out, you just want to stick to highlighting the obvious areas until you get an eye for it. Alternatively, you can head over to Games Workshop's website and look at all the images and turnarounds to see where the professionals put their highlights. If you really want to improve and get really good at highlighting, then the best thing to do is to buy a box of Space Marines and just work on edge highlighting them. They don't need to be perfect or look amazing, you just need to practice. And when you're done, you can just paint over those highlights and start again. And along with introducing some of the ideas and practices I've shown you in this tutorial, you should start to see an improvement and become more comfortable. But it takes time. I believe anyone is capable of highlighting, and highlighting to a high standard. And the only thing that's stopping us from achieving that is the belief we have in ourselves. We have to believe. As well, we need to understand that it's going to take a lot of time in practice and we need to be okay with making mistakes and that we're not going to be very good at it to start with. And eventually we'll gain enough confidence and knowledge to be able to go away and highlight anything. Before we finish, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my current supporters who allow me to make these tutorials. It really does make a huge difference and I really appreciate it. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. If you do then please let me know by liking the video and leaving a comment below. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.